Hi, this is Becky Gromlich with the Watercolor Classroom and Tuesday's Tips. Today I'm going to be talking about brushes and I'm just going to talk about the ones that I know about. I, there's lots of different kinds out there, but this is what I have settled down into after these years. I use quill brushes. These are really soft and they make smooth washes, which I'm going to demo on one of these petals. They come in all different sizes. They do work great for sky, making that really smooth blue look. And they work great for flower petals. And anything that you want there to be a smooth, seamless look, or anywhere where you want some colors to run together because they hold a ton of water. Now, this painting is sort of small, so I'm gonna use a small one. But generally, I use, or, or I could use this one, Generally, I use the biggest brush that I can for the painting. So if I'm doing a great big painting, then I use a great big brush. And if I'm doing a five by seven like this, then I go for smaller brushes. This is usually the biggest that I use, or this is similar, has a better point. So this, these two are squirrel hair, these three are squirrel hair, and this is a golden talcon, which is, acts very similar. It's a little bit stiffer, which makes it easier to use the fine point. And I'm just going to talk about each brush as I demonstrate it. So we're going for this one. And this is uh, the picture, my photo reference. So I'm going to get into some yellows. So the first thing is to get my petal wet. Now this holds so much water, I want to drain some of it out because this is small flower. I don't want uh, petals, I just want wet. And water control is a big part of watercolor painting. These have good points. You can get into little places even though they're bigger brushes. Okay, so that's pale yellow, but that'll be fine because there's not really any totally white places. And I'm using some azo yellow and some gamboge and making a mixture for them. I'm going to go light at first. That's darker than I even want. I'm going to go light at first so that I don't lose my light spots and just go right in there and then it kind of keeps running together and gets this soft look and I'll just let it sit there and it'll keep running into the wet areas. I'm going to put that aside, let it dry while I demo one of the other brushes. But these are a great tool. I hope you buy some if you don't have them. Um, the next thing that I use the most are round brushes. I usually use synthetic round brushes with a really good point. And I'm gonna hold it on this white paper so that you can see better. This is a really old one, so the point has bent a little bit, but it's just a mimic. It's sort of a generic brand. This one is a Princeton, better brand, better point. And it, you know, it's one of my favorites. I usually get six to eight, to six, eight or 10 in size in my round brushes. And then this is my most expensive brush. It's a Kalinsky Sable, and it keeps a perfect point at all times. Now the flow of paint through the Kalinsky Sable is not as great as it is through the synthetic brushes. I tend to save this one for when I need some really tiny detail, like maybe the hair on a child's head or something small like that because the flow doesn't keep it going, it makes it harder to paint long areas. So like if you had a child with long hair, uh, it would run out before you got that. Whereas one of these would not run out and these would not run out very quickly. So the quill holds the most water, would last the longest, but not make the finest line. The Klinsky Sable makes these wonderful fine lines, especially this one. It's a Maestro by Da Vinci. And then new to my uh, use, mostly I paint with those, the quills and the rounds. But I just was introduced to this uh, rigger brush. And I really quite like it. It holds quite a bit of water, you'd be surprised. But you do have to get a good puddle on your palette. Oops, I splashed. You need a lot of water in there. It doesn't really work very well. I'm gonna get some of that that I dropped in there out, make a brighter color for this. And then 
you just you go and it can make long lines and it's easy to make them curved or straight but you have to have a good puddle or it doesn't work I'm gonna make some really long grasses here just for the fun of it and then you could get other colors and, and go in with other colors and then the latest thing I've tried is a rigger and here's two riggers this is a small painting so I'm gonna use this little one but they work similar to this, except they hold really a lot of water, and you can get lots of different shapes with them. I'm told that these were first introduced for detailing on cars, this shape, because they load a lot of paint, and yet they have this great point, and so they go a long ways. And I'm gonna um, put some more grasses on here. And see, it gets fine too but you can get some more chunkier grasses if you want, or other types of shapes. If I wanted to put a tree branch, say, coming across here, I could get these all these interesting little leafy shapes and have a branch coming across. And it's quite easy to do. I'm just twisting and turning the brush as I paint with it. Let's get some more darker colors in there. That was really dark. And let them run into each other a little bit. And somewhere we need a branch, which I'm just gonna use this and keep it green and have some little branch shapes coming in here to make it make a little bit more sense. I want some of that dark down here, so I just get my rigger out and I can make it go fine or not and pull this painting together and maybe I'll make some little leafy shapes down here too. Maybe below those flowers. So this is a very fun brush. I could just keep playing, but then my video would get really long. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go to my smallest brush, which I use this mostly for signatures, and it's not even an expensive brush. It's a Simply Simmons, but it's firm. It's quite stiff, and so when you're trying to do writing, it doesn't flop over like the softer brushes that hold more water. You do have to load it more often. Um, but it works really well for that. I'm gonna put my signature on here, which I always do with tape because I am hopeless at getting a straight line. Don't know that I'll... I've chosen to make my signature very readable. Um, because I like it when I can read people's signatures, so I decided, well, if I like it, that's what I should do. Because if, if they're unreadable, then you have to remember what signature goes with what person. So you can see, you can do some tiny stuff with that brush. And then I'm gonna put um, some kind of more flowers on here, probably. Oops, that got very green. Probably just some yellow, because it's a common wildflower. Needs to be a little bit pastier, I believe. Yeah, these, uh, these leafy things that I did. Those are my favorite brushes, and I hope that you try some and really enjoy them. I'm gonna come back to this. It's not dry, 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 but it's dry enough. And I, I'm gonna come back in with my big one and try to get a little bit more of the shading in there, but keep some smoothness. So it gets pretty dark down here. There's even some brown in it. And it's not a very pretty color, but you know, every painting has their ugly color areas. I don't want too much of that color. And I'm rinsing it out pretty completely. I'm gonna spread it with this oranger color, which is also darker. And you see, it'll run together. Yes, it'll work. I'm getting back into the yellow mixed and just making this whole darker area, which I need some more of the orange gamboge, get it this darker area, because I want the darker area so that I have the shadowing. And then it fades out into this up here. And it'll keep spreading into that. And then that petal has not lost its glow at the top 
I'm just getting it wet up there so we don't get blooms up into the, this part. And it has this rounded look, and I can get more of that rounded look. Um, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of an orange by getting some more of this shading in here. And it's, it's easy to add it with these brushes because it just spreads into the paint. See, it, you can encourage it to spread like this if you want. Uh, and I think that's a good direction for this to go. I hope you can see that with me tipping it. And then I can just soften those edges so it spreads some more. And then we get some more of the shading. And then there's this one darker area up here. And we'll put that in too. So it gives that feeling of the flower, divide, the petal dividing, which it does on all of these. And then I think I'll stop on that petal. So there you have my favorite brushes. I do have other brushes that I use. If I'm uh, doing some pine needles, I use um, this one that I made, and it can make some really nice pine needles. And then I found some at the store. There are other brushes that I use occasionally, but not very often. And one is this, I did a big uh, pine tree with the short needles, and it was too much to do, but it was a close up, so it needed needles. So I made this out of an old Chinese brush I had. And then I found this, I don't know if you can see that. It has three little prongs and I tried it and it works pretty well to make pine needles. This is the wrong color for pine needles, but you can make short ones, you can make long. Um, they make these with more than just three. You can get them with five. I think you can get them with seven. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and the bell. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for watching.